Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Garl here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. I've got a ladder match for you guys today but before I crack on with that, quick message, it is of course patch season and by that I mean we've got the balance mod out, it's been out for a little while now for patch 3622. It's vitally important guys that as many people out there as possible get on, test the changes and provide feedback with associated replays on the forums. It's really important, guys. Remember, this is a democracy. We're all in charge of balancing the game and the only way it can be truly democratic is if large proportions of the community take part. So please do that. If you're not sure about anything about what the changes are, the debate has been going for some time on the forums. So go on over there and check it out. As you can see, I have a juicy new Aeon splash screen by popular demand. Hope it suffices. And as you will also see from the scrolling text, it, this game's going to feature the pilot. And I'm quite excited because as our illustrious leader, he certainly deserves to be involved in a cast, and I've never cast him before. So without further ado, let's head on over to Canis River and see how he's going to get on. Taking a look at the positions, up here we've got Black Death. For some reason that's not going. There we go, Black Death. And he's going Cybrin first land, and you're starting to see the changes these days, people starting to finally place factories next to the mexes get that adjacency bonus remember that didn't used to be such a big deal but now it's with the upgraded changes for a t1 mass point attachment you're getting a seven and a half percent bonus and then it's like 12 12 and a half percent and then it's like 25 percent for t3 so it really does make use uh, make it very useful indeed it's worthwhile doing so he's, anyway, he's in the red corner, he's going Cybrin, first land, bunch of P-Gens, and getting that adjacency bonus straight off the pad for him is a light assault bot that's heading south at great speed over towards the blue corner, and it's not Bob the Builder, it is in fact Zipilot, he's got that very amusing, obviously, naming script on his comm, and he's going uh, Aeon, as I say, and he's starting land, couple of P-Gens, and also, of course, getting that adjacency bonus, and it's nice as well, attaching a power generator that will cost less to upgrade in terms of power as and when he comes to do it so the first lab is making contact or looking like it's about to make contact it's gonna just chill here perhaps waiting for the first engineers to come across to this mass point it's quite clever positioning there by black death but it has been spotted thanks to this spirit nice little bit of intel so an aurora is gonna come along and terminate its life end its day in a very sad state of affairs. Now Zep's going to get those units across the river, wisely determining that there would be a lab here as well. He's going to shoo that away without any difficulty. So a nice start from Zep. He's countered the initial lab play from Black Death without any losses at all on the engineer, uh, engineer front. And now uh, <laughs> Zep's making his way forward, wasting mass apparently. Uh, often he likes to do going second land as well so no terrifically early airplay third land as well so yeah no air off the bat just yet it's also very important with the balance patch guys there's been quite an interesting debate on auroras they're being changed quite heftily uh, not actually due to balancing but because they were bugged originally um, but it has changed the mechanics, so they might need a little bit of a nerf. So it is important that you get on there and check that out. But obviously this is not uh, SimCity mode. This is not the balance patch. This is the ladder. So this is the conventional mode of faff. Black Death going to wail away on that mass point first. Take it out for going after Zep for a little bit of exchange. And it's just literally no micro involved. They're just going to stand there and finally... Black Death is going to check it out, of course, having slightly fewer hit points on that commander to the tune of a thousand. Straight up would never win that fight. Zep's now trying to convince us that he's an SCU. Once again, they're engaging in some comp play. But over on the right-hand side, we've got a Mantis that skirted her right the way around the edge of the map. And is trying to pick up some engineers. Could potentially grab this one if he scoots left. That'd be a nice stop on that PD if he does, but he's not going to make it. Superior range on those Auroras. Far too much damage. And uh, you can see Black Death down to about 5,500 hit points. Zep on around 7,000 hit points. 
so he was definitely making out better on that. Black Death started a PD but thought better of it when he became apparent that Zeph had crossed the water with these groups of spirits and auroras on the right hand side. And that's actually pushing north now. It's going to run into some Mantis. Not probably going to be able to finish off that mass extractor. And now he's, as he retreats, he's going to run properly into Black Death's ACU. He'll be able to finish those off with no difficulty whatsoever. So still all land it looks. We've got four land factories down up here for Black Death. A fifth under construction. But we are seeing the first air units. We've got an interceptor out now for Zep. So Zep has made the transition to air. He's also got six land factories in place. So in terms of build power, Zep is leading. Take a quick look at Eco in just a second. We see how this engagement's going to turn out. Looks like it's going to turn out with Aurora's being defeated, although he scooched right past, of course, being able to roll across the puddle like that. And I say puddle because that is an immensely shallow bit of water. It's enough to stop units, of course, that aren't amphibious, but any kind of AC or anything is pretty much going to be standing out with his head above water unless he gets right into the middle. is trying to make some impact as they make their way south into the center of Zep's territory, but there's too many Auroras in place, and actually Zep's finding himself a little bit caught now as he drops below 4,000 HP. Needs to scoot somewhere safe. He is going to make it to the water, potentially into the deeper sections that I mentioned earlier. Just see... Does he ever actually? I'm not even certain that he does actually. Answers on a postcard if you clear the surface of the water with an ACU on Canis River. Very interested to know that. But anyway, groups of Mantis strolling down the right-hand side, but thoroughly outgunned. There's far too many Auroras for them to contend with. They're going to push forward a little bit and catch the remaining two. That is a nullified threat for the moment. Black Death is getting up some point defense at the land bridge, or just north of it. Well, at the same time, streaming Mantis Cross. So I like this play. He's trying to lock down this area with a little bit of static and streaming his mobile across the rear section. It's a good way to do it. The only problem is that there's a lot of units from Zep making their way up the vulnerable right flank on the right side of the map. Like Death is trying to counter with some newly produced units. They're rolling over to the right-hand side of the map as we speak. But I think it's going to be too late to save these two mass points. One goes down. question is, will... Zep commit and take that out, or will he be scared off by the first few forces that turn up? We shall see. Stay tuned. <laughs> and now on the left-hand side, it's Black Death's turn to be a little bit aggressive. He's funneling his troops down through this aperture, but is not got a particularly good representation against Zep's forces. He's got a nice concave there, and Black Death knows that, so he's going to withdraw slightly, get a little bit of a broader face up against Zep. And Black Death actually on an upgrade here. We'll have to check out what that is. Right arm. Okay, very quick look at what's going on there. It's very different, so it's probably... That's either or, isn't it, for Cyber? And we shall soon see. Our survey says it is the gun upgrade. And no sooner does that finish, he gets shot in the face by an Oblivion turret. So I imagine... That is T2 Engineering Suite on Zep's ACU. And that is going to force Black Death right off the edge. He only had a small auto gun to his name at that entry point. He had to withdraw slightly. And now it's Zep's turn to be aggressive. He's going to cross the river just to the side here. And immediately start another Oblivion Turret. So we've got a little bit of a point defense creep happening down here at the edge of Zep's territory. Black Death looks like uh, he wants to try and stop that going up. He could do with another shot on it, though. He does manage to do it. Zep in SimCity mode didn't manage to get the T1 up to accompany it. Large groups of Mantis coming in from Black Death. Managed to take out the auto turret, but Black Death now finds himself pretty heavily shooed backwards by all of this Aurora spam. He has got the gun upgrade, so he will be pretty lethal. I'd like to see him overcharging more. The question is, does he even have energy storage? 
quick look back here to see if we could see it. Yes, he does. So the overcharge is available. It would be a very uncharacteristic mistake for people at this level if they were reached the 10 minute mark and didn't have any energy storage. Except asking kindly and politely not to be hurt. You're doing all right for the moment. Nothing in the immediate area. It's on 7.5k, but a large stream of Mantis coming around the left-hand side now of the map. Zep needs to redeploy some forces to deal with that. And now Black Death is on another upgrade. Very interesting. Check out what that is at the moment. But another PD going down for Zep. He's determined to seal off this area of the map. Also got Mantis making their way down the right hand side. So if you take a quick look at what these guys are doing economically wise. 18 mass for Zep. And... 30 mass for Black Death. So on Eco, Black Death is significantly ahead. If Zep doesn't get back on top of this, he uh, finds himself going out. Black Death trying to nullify that Oblivion turret. But he's taking fire from the rear one as well. That's a bad place to stand. Cybrin ACU and all that. Very squishy. Drops down into the red. 2,500 hit points. Oh, 1,800 hit points. Did manage to finish off that Oblivion turret. And it's a good thing he did as well because he probably wouldn't have made it out of there if he hadn't managed it. So once again, Zep's efforts to lock down this area with some point defense go unfulfilled. A few engineers now getting caught by some Mantis on the right-hand side, but... I think Black Death's going to overcommit. I don't think they're going to last too long either. That's significant amounts of Auroras that are bearing down on them. Black Death moves into the puddle. See, that looks distinctly like you're above water. You can't even see the water. Is that even... I mean, it is literally a puddle. I don't think you're ever actually safe. Get out of range, maybe, of the smaller T1 units. But there's a lot of Auroras bearing down from Black Death. Gets a timely rank up on his ACU. Two ranks on him, but he's down to 2,000 hit points. There's a lot of Auroras there. His Mantis are coming in to try and assist. This could be an early needed win for Zep here. 500 HP. Oh, no. Nicely done, Zep. Just get the feeling that if he hadn't have done that, he wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have been able to carry the game the way things are going. Look like... Black Death's eco was just too strong. You take a look down here. Zep's mass points were all still on T1. Whereas uh, Black Death had at least a couple or at least one or two T2s in his main base. And he kind of had more map control as well. In terms of the stuff that he had up. You can see he's got a couple of extra mass points down there that are in his name. Whereas Zep hasn't managed to claim these two. He did have a Jester out as well. Which would have given some interesting versatility to the game so black death definitely made the transition to air but nicely done zep very nicely done indeed it always a pleasure to cast the game for you sir we'd like to see you play more games so we can do just that hope you enjoyed that guys it was a bit of a short one but i promise there will be more coming soon so in the meantime stay well and stay safe this is guile signing out